So let's look at the first gesture. Well, the Tai Chi beginning is actually the first of 24, so this is the second gesture. This is called Parting of the Wild Horse's Mane. In the short form, we do three of these in succession, starting off with a left bow stance version of it. Before we actually start walking with it, I'd like to just practice moving our hands. So as with everything we do in Tai Chi, always establish your Wu Chi stance. All right, get used to that. It feels funny to have my feet out like this now. I like the sensation of a strong stance. Tongue over your mouth, lips closed. So you can still maintain the spirit of the work by holding on to these other facets while we're just isolating one particular thing. All right, so with uh, parting the wild horse's mane, you want to start off with your hands over each other. And you've heard this a lot in Tai Chi circles where you're holding a ball. And I mean literally holding a ball. Your palms should be facing each other, one over. Because if I was holding, say, a basketball, if my hands are like this, I'm pretty much just balancing ball here because this hand isn't even over the top of it, right? So you want to make sure that your hands are over each other when you're doing this holding ball concept. I'm going to face sideways because another one of uh, Yang Chen Fu's important principles is to keep your elbows down. When you keep your elbows down, it keeps your shoulders down. So if your shoulders are up like this to hold your elbow up, I like to call this holding the cube because my hands are kind of flat, right? That's not relaxing. Try this, stand like this for a second, make your hands stiff, make your elbow parallel to the floor. Now relax your wrist and drop your elbow and relax the shoulder. Ah, doesn't that feel a lot better? I know it feels better for me. So why would I want to induce stress when the whole idea behind Tai Chi Chuan is to reduce or minimize it or maybe even eliminate it? So when you're doing the whole ball thing, for this particular gesture and with others too, we'll cross that when we get to them. You want to keep your hands over each other, off of your hip, elbow down, shoulder down. Okay? So the way we're going to do this exercise is we're just going to switch from side to side. So using your center, turn to the right or left, whatever way you want. You can match me in the uh, TV or monitor. So what's going to happen with my left hand? is it's going to come, let's just drop the right hand for a second. My left hand is going to come from my hip level up to my throat level, right about here. As if I was drawing a sword. If I had a scabber here and it was sheathed, I would have to pull it up and out, all right? You don't go straight, you're going to arc this. So if I'm holding the ball, my left palm is up, holding the ball. The movement is going to be turn your center and pull your hand. Stop when your hand is about throat level, somewhere in that vicinity. And you want your hand at an angle like this. Now this is a ward off hand and you'll see this in other forms too. In this particular form, I'm going to turn my hand sideways like this. Now the reason I'm doing that is from a martial application, this goes into your opponent's throat. All right, this would fit nice. I can't do my hand backwards, but it fits in the person's throat right here. This hand here, when an attack comes, will clear that, get it out of the way so that you can attack their throat. But for the sake of the form and the gesture, all I'm going to do here is turn my waist, draw my sword, and as my hand starts to move down here at the bottom, it's going to make space for this hand, which is elbow down, relaxed, to go straight down. Now, in my mind, it's like I'm pushing a ball underwater. Okay, just push, pushing the ball straight down. So this is a little tricky. That's why I want to say, let's just practice moving the hands. As I draw the sword, this hand's going to go straight down. Now we got to do the other side, right? So I'm going to turn to my left, and it would be to your right. I'm going to slide my right hand underneath and notice that I'm already getting the ball. My hands are over each other and now I'm off of my left hip. Stop for a second. Check. Are you holding a cube or are you holding a ball? Hopefully you're holding the ball. Now the size of the Tai Chi ball is determined by your shoulder. So the upper hand is shoulder level and the lower hand is Dantian level. All right. Use your center. Turn the center first. 
draw the sword off of your other hip and the left hand goes straight down. And once I'm at the bottom, I relax it. This is my yin hand, this guy's working. This is my yang hand. Substantial, insubstantial. All right, let's go again. Turn, slide the lower hand underneath. Keep the lower hand even with your down tian, three fingers below your belly button, upper hand no higher than your shoulder. Relax the elbow, keep the shoulder down. All right, let's draw the sword, push your right hand straight down, and when you're at the bottom, relax it. Turn to the other side, hold the ball, part the mane. Turn, hold the ball, part the mane. Hold the ball, part the main. Okay, great, so now let's move. We'll take this uh, part in the wild horse's main gesture for a little walk. And I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on the footwork because hopefully you've been uh, practicing that and it's getting close to being sort of in your muscle memory to some degree. What we need to figure out is how to coordinate the hands with the footwork, all right? So that being said, Establish, in my case, it's a left bow stance for you. That would be a right bow stance, and it really doesn't matter because when you go to do the form, you've got to do both sides anyway. So you can mirror me uh, in front of the monitor. All right, so make sure that your shoulder width, that you're sitting in the quad, your hips are straight ahead, your left hand is even with your own throat, and your right hand is down at your side. All right, to start the movement, you always have to go back before you can go forward. So sit deep in the back leg and bring the toes up. Once again, I want to make sure that I have no weight in that front foot, okay? Separation of yin and yang. Now, I'm going to rotate my left foot, but as I do that, don't forget, you're trying to lock your center to the foot so that you don't compromise your knee. In this particular gesture, I'm also going to use this twisting motion because your hips are always, your center is always leading the motion. You don't lock things, you lead with your waist. So that being said, I'm going to turn my center, and as I turn my center, that's going to move my foot. It's also going to turn my left hand over and begin to slide my right hand underneath because I've got to get that ball thing that we were doing before. So all together, I'm going to twist that, slide my hand underneath, release my back foot, come to my center step, but I'm not going to stop. Point your toes straight ahead. Again, make sure that there's separation in your yang. Now, before, with the Bruce Willis drill, I had you pointing your hands in the same direction as your left foot. So this forces you to get a stretch, right, the flexibility of a child, to get a stretch that you're not used to yet. So you may not be able to hit this right away, but I want you to be mindful of it because when I'm holding this ball, it's off my hip. So my hands are behind me a little bit, as my center line is over here where I took that 90 degree twist step. My toes are up. As the toes start to go down, like swinging the weapon, my hands are gonna start to move. My right hand's gonna draw the sword, my left hand's gonna start to go down. And right here, when I'm about halfway through my movement, my right foot hit the ground, so I'm corkscrewing, I'm rooting this foot, I'm gonna start to root the back foot. So continue using your center to finish the drawing of the sword, pull that back foot, drop the left hand down, sit in the quaw, and finish the gesture. Let's go to the other side. So I'm gonna roll back, again, try to keep my one height, roll back, toes up. Twist step, so again, as I twist, I move my center, slip my left hand underneath, transition, Knees over the toes, elbows down, shoulders relaxed, principle five, holding my zen point. Bring my left foot in, don't stop, send it out, toes straight ahead. As the toes go down, I start to move so I can release my center line as I pull my weapon or, or change my hands. As the toes go down, I start to move my center. I'm in the corner now, and then I'm going to pull that back foot, sit in my quad, and finish my gesture. Okay, so let's take that all the way through one more time. Non-stop. So roll back, toes up, twist step, pass through step, right hand up, left hand down, fix the back foot, sit in the quad root, roll back, twist step, 
pass through step. Left hand up, right hand down. Root the back foot, sit in your qua, manifest the gesture. I'm in the left bow stance now. Roll back, toes up on my weights in that back foot. No weight in the front, substantial, insubstantial, down in. 90 degree twist step, pass through step, toes up, no weight. Test the ice, make sure it's safe. Then you decide, safe. Put the foot down, root it, root the back foot, square the hips, face your opponent. One more, roll back, and here's when you're going to twist, get your ball, pass through, toes down, draw the sword, root the back foot, square your hips, finish the gesture. So now I'm going to do this as I would do it in the form. The other thing to bring to your attention, again, when you're watching most uh, videos on YouTube, people are doing their forms in uh, competition speed. About six to seven minutes to do the 24. If you're doing it as moving meditation, it takes about 10 to 12 minutes. So I'm going to execute it in uh, Tai Chi speed so you can get a sense of how slow you want to move. The slower you move, the better. If, you, if it takes you 13, 15 minutes, God bless you, okay? All right. So parting the wild horse's mane. We do three of these and you start off in your left bow stance. So the last thing I want to bring to your attention is that when you're moving in Tai Chi, the minute that you start, you never stop moving. So the tricky part is to allow somebody who's viewing you to see the gesture clearly defined. It's like a nano breath of a moment. So here's what I mean by that. So this is part of the wild horse's mane. If I want to move continuously, I still have to at least finish the gesture and pause for like almost undetectable so that they can see that you have formed that gesture before you go on to the next execution of it. So once I root the back foot, sit in my qua and form the gesture, I can go on to the next one. Be careful not to be thinking so far ahead that you start moving too soon. And so here's what I mean by that. I'm gonna speed this up just a little bit. So I'll see this roll back, and before we even finish this, we're already moving to the next gesture. So I didn't really see the martial application or the clear definition of it, all right? Uh, so taking it from the beginning, just for ha-has. Once I plant this foot, root myself, take my breath, you never stop. So even here, I begin to move. Foot comes out before I even get to the next one. So again, trying to keep my one height. Again, this is not Tai Chi speed, I'm just going through the uh, process here. And I'm ending here. Step over the rail, left hand up, right hand down, 50-50, weight distribution, fix the back foot, root it, sit in your quaff, finish your gesture. Roll back, toes up, twist step 90 degrees, pass through step, hold your zen point, right hand up, left hand down. When you hit 50-50, fix the back foot, root it, Sit in your qua, form your gesture. Roll back, hold ball, toes up, 
twist step, pass through step, left hand up, right hand down, root the back foot, when you're at 50-50, sit in your quad, form your gesture. Left hip. Step right over right. the rail. Right hand up, left hand down, fix the back foot. Finish, sit in your quad, roll back, hold ball. Twist step, pass through step. Parting the wild horse's mane. Left hand up, right hand down. Root the back foot, sit in your quad, finish your gesture. One more, roll back, hold ball, twist step, pass through step, right hand up, left hand down, fix the back foot, hold now, the ball. Step over the rail, good bow stance, left hand up, right hand down, 50-50, fix the back foot, sit in your quad, form your gesture. Roll back, toes up. Twist step, pass through step, right hand up, left hand down at 50-50, fix the back foot, sit in your quad, form your gesture. One more, roll back, toes up, twist step, pass through step, left hand up, right hand down, fix the back foot, sit in your quad, white crane spin. Parting the wild horse's mane. Right hand up, left hand down, fix the back foot. Sit in your quad, form your gesture. Roll back, hold ball. 90 degree twist step, pass through step. Left hand up, right hand down, 50-50, root the back foot, square off. Roll back, one more. Twist step, pass through step. Toes down, 50-50. Pull the back foot, sit in your quad, form your gesture. White crane spreads with. Parting the wild horse's mane. Left hand up, right hand down, root the back foot. Roll back, twist step. Pass through step. Right hand up, left hand down. Fix the back foot, sit in your quad, form your gesture. Roll back, toes up. Twist step, pass through step. Left hand up, right hand down, 50-50, fix the back foot and root it. Sit in the quad, form your gesture. Parting the wild horse's mane. Right hand up, left hand down, Fix the back foot and root it. Sit in your quad. Roll back. Twist step. Pass through step. Left hand up, right hand down. Root the back foot. Sit in your quad. Form your gesture. Roll back, hold ball. Twist step. Pass through step. Right hand up, left hand down. Fix the back foot. Sit in your quad, form your gesture. Okay, now I'm gonna do those same sequences, but without audio. Just follow along and use this for more practice opportunity.